In this video, we're going to learn how to enable server interactivity in order to make a component interactive. We are actually going to work on that in Visual Studio. So in order to demonstrate that, we are going to make this server component, which is this one, interactive. Well, we already made it interactive with enhanced form handling. But this time, we're going to remove the enhanced form handling. We're going to use server interactivity. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's remove edit form along with all of these views. We don't need that anymore. And let's remove the clothing tag here. Now we can recover this and we're going to initialize the server variable here where we define it. And then I'm going to delete this on parameter set and we're going to delete this event handler as well. Now this button has to be now changed to button and we can just handle the click event. So here we are going to say, I want to change status. And now we are going to declare this change status function inside of our code block here. And inside here, we can simply just say this dot server dot is online equals the opposite of it. So if this is true, then the result will be false. If this is false, the result is true. We can use something like if server is not now, then we are going to set it. All right, let's try to run this application. And you will see that the breakpoint here is not going to be hit, right? Let's set a breakpoint here, run the application in debug mode. And now let's go to manage servers. We see this server is in Toronto that is offline. Click on it. Absolutely nothing is happening. Go to network tab here and again, click on this. You can see nothing is happening. That's because we haven't actually enabled server interactivity yet. So let's go back and stop debugging. And then let's go to solution explorer here. Let's go to program.cs. This is where we can enable server interactivity. First thing first, in this map razor components function here, we can connect that with add interactive server render mode. And then at the dependency injection part, we talked about dependency injection before, right? Here we can also connect that with add interactive server components. So this provide all of the dependencies for this to work. And those are the only two things you need to do here. Once these two lines are added, we can rerun the application. I rerun it in debug mode. Now, if I go to manage servers and click on turn on and off, and you can see it still doesn't work. So there is another thing that needs to be added. So let's go back over here and turn this off again. Now let's go to servers.razor where the server component is added to the managed services page component. Here we need to specify the render mode. So render mode equals interactive server. And that's it. That will enable server interactivity. Okay, so there are two things you need to do. One is in the program.cs, you need to add these two lines. Secondly, you need to specify the render mode. And there are different places we can specify the render mode. Well, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. Right now, let's just run this application and see how it works. But before we do that, remember to delete this paragraph element. It's going to actually cause some issues with the server side rendering, turn it on. So let's re remove that because it's not necessary anyways. All right, let's run the application now. And we have a breakpoint set up here. So let's run the application now and see what's going to happen. All right, our application is running. Let's go to many servers. And we see our component here. Server is in Toronto. That is offline. Let's click on the button. And you can see that the breakpoint is triggered just because we added a event handler here. Right? There's no forms. There's no HTTP post request. It just works. And let's remove the breakpoint and continue. Now you can see it's turned back on and click on it. We'll make it go off on off on off works very well and now let's examine the network tab here so f12 bring up the developer tool and go to network here 
and scroll down and click on turn on and you can see there's no request coming on right there's nothing going on here that because we are not actually watching the signal channel so in order to see the signal channel let's actually refresh uh this whole page right so this first time when the page is refreshed what is happening is exactly in the diagram that i showed you right first time there is a HTTP request and comes back with a response that renders the page and that also renders this blazer.web.js file so we can see that it goes to the server's page as a document and then the blazer.js file is downloaded to the browser and we have signal channel that is established in order to make it clear let's make it separate so this is the one that we were looking at this is the actual signal channel so the other two are made for laser ssr so they are not actually being used constantly this is the signal channel that's established between the browser and this component inside the memory on the back end if i make this appear on the left hand side and make this appear on the right hand side and now if i click on the button you can see the message is growing see two message goes to the server and two message come back each time i click on it the messages are being sent back and forth and you can see the length of the message a few hundred bytes so pretty tiny and that's the div between the render trees that I mentioned in the previous video. So in order to review how Blazor server interactivity works, I'm going to take this opportunity to go through what's happening in that diagram again. So when I click on the turn on and off button, this event is captured by the blazor.web.js file. And a message is sent to the memory representation of this component in the backend right on the server that component receive that little message a few hundred bytes and then it executes this function when the function is executed the state variable here which is is online is changed and when that is changed the html here is re-rendered and that re-render render tree is compared with the previous render tree and then we'll see the difference right you will see that uh, the word change the color changed and that information is packaged together as a binary message sent back through the signal channel now the javascript on the front end received that message and patched the dom so it changed the color right here changed the word offline to online and if I click on it, this is happening over and over and over again through the signal channel. 